יחי המלך המשיח. Who is the Lubavitcher Rebbe? The Lubavitcher Rebbe is someone that is the Jewish leader. The Lubavitcher Rebbe is someone you can search up on Wikipedia and find out all the details when he was born. When I'm here to give you what I experienced through the Rebbe growing up in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, the community where the Rebbe uh, has hit most of his followers, the community from which the Rebbe spread his light and his vision throughout the world through sending shluchim, which means messengers to all corners of the world to spread Judaism, Hasidic philosophy, and the message about the redemption. I grew up in the community Crown Heights where 770, the main synagogue of the Rebbe is. I grew up spending a lot of time there. I want to share the experience, the education, and why I think it's so important that even though 20 years after his death, we believe the Rebbe is still alive and that life and death is connected to something that's connected to God, which is higher than mankind, and we believe that God allows the righteous to live on but at the same time he doesn't allow it to interfere with um, the physical world because if people would know that the Rebbe is alive or if they would see that the Rebbe is alive then your free choice of doing right from wrong would be jeopardized you would you would see open miracles and you would be inclined to um, follow in the way of God um, for your own personal gain. God always wants you to think um, that you have free choice and free choice means you can decide to be selfish or to give to the world and you always have to see a benefit in both. So to keep that balance God makes that the righteous are not being, you know, you can't see them alive, but they are definitely alive. Okay, the Rebbe is alive. That's just a fundamental belief. I had to say that before we even get into this because the way we're, I'm going to address the Rebbe is the Rebbe King Mashiach Shlita, the King Messiah, may he live forever. Shlita means may he live forever. So I didn't even start talking and I'm already telling you what I think about the Rebbe. Okay, very biased, very biased of me. But that's how it is. You see, when you grow up uh, in a community for 20 years, you 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 get a bi <laughs> you get a biased opinion about things. It's not so much a bad thing because if you're biased for goodness and kindness, if you're biased for a righteous cause, I don't think it's a problem. Now, is it a righteous cause? We'll find out in a minute. The Lubavitcher Rebbe comes to America, escaping Nazi Germany leaving on the last boat from France, so the historians say. Uh, the Rebbe comes to New York. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe comes to New York. We have a video about that. Uh, and the Rebbe comes to America. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe is already old. He did his prime time of leadership of the Lubavitch group uh, was in Russia. And when he comes to America, he's already an old man. Ten years after he arrives here, he passes away. He only has daughters, not sons. And he has two son-in-laws. And now the reign of rulership of the Chabad movement um, has to be decided between two people. The Rebbe or the Rashag which is the second, the both son-in-laws of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rashag is thinking about running uh, and being the next Rebbe, but when he has a conversation with the Rebbe and the Rebbe says, I spoke to the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe and he told me so and so and so, and the Rashag says, I'm stepping down because the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe already passed away and I haven't spoken to him and if the Ramash, which was what they called the Rebbe back then, 
has already spoken to the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, then I guess he's more of a righteous candidate and he obviously has a connection, stronger connection to the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but let me point, here we go. That picture is the Rebbe that I'm talking about. That one, which has light on it, is the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe and that's the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe's father and that's the first Rebbe of Chabad the Alter Rebbe the Rebbe assumes leadership a year after the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe passes away the Rebbe does not try to start anything new so to speak the Lubavitcher Rebbe on the first day of his leadership says the discourse Basi Legani Basi Legani is a mimer which is a Hasidic discourse that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe also um, distributed and gave out. Um, and it seems that the Rebbe was trying to connect himself to the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, expound on what the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe has begun, and not so much start his own movement. Obviously the Rebbe with the years uh, implemented many um, new ideas within the Chabad movement and upgraded a lot of concepts that were sitting in the basket of Hasidic philosophy and brought them to the light of day uh, but the Rebbe was never taking on cutting away from his chain of ancestors or his chain of the Hasidic dynasty or the lineage that he was coming from the Rebbe was continuing in the footsteps of those that were before him the beginning of the Rebbe's leadership, there were many, many older Hasidim that, if you want to talk age-wise, had big, long, white beards, and the Rebbe just had a little white on the side. But the Rebbe obviously surpassed them in knowledge and in spiritual refinement. And the Rebbe just um, humbled anyone that even tried to uh, challenge the Rebbe. The Rebbe also had a very strong positive energy and even the worst creatures of the world can come to the Rebbe and not find any way to get under the Rebbe's skin. Not only that, the Rebbe owned all these people. The Rebbe totally understood how to behave towards every creature according to their subscription. You know, studying psychology and, and knowing a little bit about different kinds of people and how they try to manipulate others and they're not exactly what they say they are. They always have something else going on in their head. It's amazing to see how the Rebbe never once fell for any psychopaths or narcissists or all kinds of weirdos that had all kinds of agendas um, and might have been jealous upset, annoyed, and many other things, you know, going on in their heads when they came to the Rebbe. And you can see that in the dollars. The Rebbe, people say the Rebbe had, you know, you know, you can read someone's thoughts. And uh, you see that a lot of times, you see that there was a guy there thanking the Rebbe and, you know, you know, flattering the Rebbe. And then the Rebbe says, don't try to bribe me. And then the guy just bursts out laughing and you're talking about like and, and he starts to apologize to the Rebbe for trying to bribe him with all kinds of flattery words that he can he should endorse a certain mayor uh, you know that the Jewish people should vote you know so you see there's a lot of I don't know people came and tried to test the Rebbe the reason it's so important for me to discuss the Rebbe is because the Rebbe is my strongest source of hope and inspiration the Rebbe's work is unbelievable and the Rebbe's outlook on life is so positive and so bright. The Rebbe, you know, merely wanted goodness and kindness in the world. That's all he wanted. He wanted the seven laws of Noah for all mankind to go public and go viral. He, the Rebbe wanted to advertise and proclaim that the redemption is here and we have to open our eyes to see that the redemption is here and we have to focus on positivity in the world. No matter how you look at it, you can't find the, the Rebbe caring about anyone else other than the population and I hope that I go in that way and I hope that I succeed in um, 
living up to that you know world view the Rebbe also uh, had a lot of uh, the Rebbe was also able to deal with the world and see what the world needs and not only what his Hasidim need, what his followers need. The Rebbe had a very global vision and that's why the Rebbe always tried to broaden the boundaries, physical and spiritual, of the Hasidic group. The Rebbe also wanted that the Jewish people should actually facilitate their light onto the nations. The Rebbe wanted that the Jewish people should embrace their Judaism, be proud of it, and move on to the world and give the world what Judaism has to offer as far as morality and ethics. Judaism has a very rich way and an interesting way of solving issues that has nothing to do with bloodshed. That has nothing to do with bloodshed. The Rebbe wanted the world to implement this direction. The Rebbe wanted that the Jewish people should be able to be a light onto the nations without bloodshed, without killing, stealing, or any crime to show that the world can succeed and there is no reason to lie, cheat, scam, be in a negative mode, and that everyone should help each other and invest in each other and not see that as them losing because everything you throw out into the world you will receive back and you're just doing yourself a favor you know it's like uh, a medic he's in charge of healing the entire community so if anyone is physically sick then they'll come to him but the medic has psychological problems him and his wife aren't getting along so he goes to the psych to psychology to the psychologist you know to sort out his problems with his wife and the psychologist helps all the people in the community you know get through their psychological problems but if he is wounded he'll go to the medic the same thing is everyone has to understand you know you're giving to the entire world you have this power to give to the entire world and you should give to the entire world and you shouldn't be greedy and think oh look I'm helping everyone why isn't anyone helping me people are helping you you know you don't grow tomatoes you don't grow lettuce maybe you do I don't know but you you know there's ways that everyone is helping each other so don't be upset when it's your turn to help the world that was the Rebbe's that was the Rebbe's vision that's what the Rebbe wanted people to be selfless when it comes to ego and greed the Rebbe wanted to open our eyes to see the world vision the Rebbe didn't want us to stay stuck and narrow on one little thing me 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 I need more money I need more this I need more that uh, you don't need money you don't need anything just shut up and help the world and, 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 and it's so fulfilling to help the world. Why is it such a challenge for people to do it? People are living, living in their little incubators. And then finally when they get on the internet and they're supposed to be broadening their horizons. They're supposed to be getting a world view instead of going and, you know, searching up, you know, things that are actually important in their life. They search up satisfying videos. There are these satisfying videos on YouTube that literally make no sense in the world it's just like chocolate pouring onto trays and machines moving real quick and all kinds of other garbage which you know satisfying I guess it's satisfying you know but there's nothing and they have millions of views billions of views I guess people really like seeing satisfying crap but guess what that won't make the world a better place Finally you're online, finally you can learn something that you didn't know till now. And that's all you care about is satisfying yourself and going, ah, that was great. Now let me go self-indulge just a little more because I have to take a break from self-indulging. The Rebbe wanted people to look out, the Rebbe wanted people to go out, the Rebbe, people want, the Rebbe wanted people to think for the future and invest in the future. The Rebbe wanted people to come up with great ideas and pull them through. The Rebbe wanted unity. The Rebbe wanted action. The Rebbe said he's done everything he can and now he's leaving it up to us. And that's the worst thing or the hardest thing or the best thing that a Hasid can hear, that a follower of the Rebbe can hear. You know, imagine your teacher tells you exactly what you're supposed to do and you're and after learning so much from your teacher you finally realize that your teacher probably knows how to do it the best then your teacher tells you you know as much as I know how to do it I can't do it alone 
you need to help me. On one hand, that's a very hard thing to hear because now the student really needs to take responsibility. And of course, you have Hasidim that will take responsibility, but they're not working united. Well, they are working united, you know. There's so many things going on. You have a full week full of work and you barely have time to think about the world and even if you do, you have all your stupid friends which go, nah, it's never gonna happen. Whatever you think you're gonna do to change the world is obviously a waste of time. You sound like a ridiculous fool trying to even make the world a better place. Worry about yourself, worry about your own family, worry about yourself, look out for yourself, be a paranoid freak and everyone that walks around in the street look at them suspiciously because maybe they're gonna attack you and for your own good and for your own protection, for your own safety first, make sure that you take care of yourself and yourself and yourself. Whatever happened to going out of yourself, whatever having to believing in God that he protects the world and that he is in charge. Uh, that's what the Rebbe wanted. The Rebbe wanted to change people in that perspective exactly. The Rebbe wanted people to get out of their box. The Rebbe wanted people to go out of their box. The Rebbe wanted people to look for the redemption and make it a reality. That was what the Rebbe wanted. That's what I get from the Rebbe. Anyone that wants to learn about the Rebbe, there are books from you can check on the Rebbe's videos. Gem uh, puts out videos. They put out selective videos about the Rebbe. You can get a small taste of the Rebbe from there. There are other people who put out videos. Obviously, there's no funding to translate all the Rebbe's videos to English. And uh, I don't know. I mean, he got a, he got a medal that in almost a hundred years nobody in the American nobody in the society got such a medal of honor for helping the, the 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 for helping society so much the Rebbe got a medal that in the last hundred years in America nobody got such a medal that's how much the Rebbe was a beacon of light in the world yet besides the medal the Rebbe did not yet get the funding he needs for all of his videos to be translated to Yiddish, to, from Yiddish to English so that the American people can also get a taste of what the Rebbe's greatness was all about and not only his followers or those who speak Yiddish. So, it's very nice of the American government to give the Rebbe a Medal of Honor and every single year on the Rebbe's birthday every, uh, ever since, uh, even Trump so ever since the, they, they decided uh, this concept, Education Day is signed on Yud Aleph Nisan according to the Jewish calendar when it falls on the Rebbe's birthday, which is a little bit before Passover. And every single year they sign, the president signs this and it becomes news and everything. But besides the president signing this officially, and this being custom from president to president, and besides the Rebbe getting his medal, funding to fund every single video of the Rebbe's work translated to English with English subtitles has still not yet been funded. Gem, which, which, uh, Gem, which is the biggest corporation um, taking the Rebbe's works and publicizing it throughout the world, selectively pick and choose different segments of what the Rebbe spoke about and put it out in the world according to their vision. But if you're talking about an archive of the Rebbe's video work, which is available, all his Hasidim have hard drives of terabytes upon terabytes of all the Rebbe's video documented Fabregans when the Rebbe spoke, talking about hundreds of thousands of hours, tens and tens of years, that stuff should be translated to English so that the American people and the people throughout the world can get a taste into the Rebbe's life. But funding for that has never been given due to poor political management of the Chabad movement and I guess lack of interest or the government being corrupt or all of the above. So, on this day, which is the end of Passover, 
I tell you a little bit about the Rebbe and I tell you that there's so much more and I also tell you that there's nothing like watching the Rebbe himself speak and getting a taste because I can't, I'm not on the Rebbe's level and there's nothing like seeing the Rebbe himself and again if you want to know things that you can do if you're a private person learn the bi biography of the Rebbe learn about who the Rebbe was try to find some YouTube material or whatever online information that you can about the Rebbe and if you're up there in the government or if your name is Rothschild or something like that then you should definitely put together a detective crew which should go in and find as much um, video of the Rebbe and they should translate it all in English all of the Rebbe's work organize it and not censor it at all because every word the Rebbe says is important whether today it doesn't fit the political agenda it might fit the political agenda tomorrow the Rebbe's um, archive must be whole you can't cut and choose and pick and, this and that according to the waves of democracy or whatever other garbage is going on because the Rebbe has a humane and ethical and moral uh, light that he wants to share with the world and you can't, you can't diminish it, you can't give it in small doses. Peace out, Yechiyam, I hope you enjoyed. Please like and share, subscribe if you want to see more of this and don't forget to check on our YouTube channel for more things that are connected to Mashiach and how you can prepare and accept upon yourself the Rebbe King Mashiach Shlita. I didn't even get close to talking about how the Rebbe is Mashiach, which is obvious, and how the Rebbe is a prophet, which is obvious. I do go through these things throughout my channel and my 200 videos. This channel is only about Mashiach, it's only about the Rebbe and how we can prepare and accept Mashiach. So I'm sure you'll have a good time if you check it out. Don't forget to share it with the world. It's also going to make the world a better place. And see you around. And I'm still waiting for Infowars.com, Mark Dice, Ron Johnson, and all the good guys to talk about Orthodox Judaism, the light of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and how it affects the world. It's like talking about, you know, they're always avoiding the big elephant in the room. They're talking about Trump and Syria and this and that and that and the other. Why don't you talk about the light unto the nations? Why don't you talk about the Jewish people being a light? Why don't you talk about the Bible the way it is? And then mix it with, you know, you know, you know, you know, I, I'll tell you one thing. I was very impressed. Trump put out a video. He got a good few million views in a very short amount of time, which is not every video gets a few million views in a short amount of time. And he mentions Passover before Easter. And he says the Jewish people are celebrating Passover. And also, the Christians are celebrating Easter and blah blah blah. The fact that he said the Jewish people are celebrating Passover before he mentioned the Easter, probably there's a few reasons. One of the main reasons probably is because celebrating Easter, give me a break. I don't know what you guys, what the Christians do. I mean, I'm not, no disrespect, but I think, I don't know, compared to the seriousness of the story of Passover, Easter is that they believe that you know who went up to heaven and he's coming back soon and I don't know what and, and, and whatever. I'm not sure exactly how it works. What all I'm saying is that the story of Ex Exodus, the story of Passover is really rich. And you can see that the president, if he spoke about Passover for two minutes, he spoke about Easter for 30 seconds even though he claims to be a Christian. Nigga, please. Everybody knows Judaism is where it's at. Everybody knows that the Jews are the ones who uphold the word of God. Get over yourselves. Fulfill the seven laws of Noah. Respect and admit that the Jewish religion is the only real thing today. And that everyone else just pulls out a barbecue and, you know, has a good time. Not that we didn't pull out a barbecue, but there's you know, fundamentals and, and, you know, carrying a religion for thousands of years and the word of God, and you can say Judaism is the mother of all faiths, you know, if it's the mother, then I, I wish it never had any kids, you know, because every kid's doing whatever he wants and not listening to his mother. So <laughs> let's get back to the source of it all. I'm not trying to disrespect any other religion. I'm just saying 
you know, at least a mention, a small mention of 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 uh, a rabbi speaking about Passover or some real intense, you know, investigation into the Orthodox Jewish community today and what it has to offer, what is the Rebbe's message to the world that is relevant today, just like any other day. I, you can watch my videos, I have prophecies of the Rebbe that speak about Syria blowing up and Persia and uh, ancient Persia, which is, which is going on in Iraq today, and, and, and the Rebbe spoke about this. The first time, the first Bush started up with Saddam Hussein, the Rebbe said, this is going to continue on and on. It's not like, you know, we went to Vietnam and then we just left. And for so many years we haven't been around. Now we're trying to mess with the other dude, who, King Jong-un, whatever his name is. But the Rebbe saw the first time America messed with the Arabs, the Rebbe said this is going to continue going as more and more and more as Mashiach is revealed to the world and the message of redemption is going to go to the world. And ever since then you have Saddam Hussein was knocked out cold. You have uh, Gaddafi was overthrown and now they're trying to take Assad out. And they're probably going to go down on Iran as the way things are going. And it's not just for oil and for this and for that. America has its reasons for going to war, but God has its reasons for making America go to war that they don't even know about. And that's what the Rebbe is speaking about. The Rebbe wants to give the, the rest of us, the humble ones, the people that are quiet usually, the true picture of what's going on. Everything that's happening, happening right now is for the benefit of the state of Israel, for the people of Israel, for the Bible of Israel, for the Jewish people. Peace out. God bless America. God bless the Jewish people. God bless the state of Israel as long as they listen to the rabbis and as long as they're eventually overthrown. Peace out. <laughs>